Thanks to recent improvements in laser instrumentation, physicists have created a new type of non-invasive microscopy technique to image live cells and tissues. Using only laser light, they are able to produce images of live cells that not only tell you what is there, but also the mechanical properties of what is there. So we use light of a certain color and uh, this light can be uh, directed towards a sample and the sample can be uh, sitting on a microscope stage. So you deliver the light on a very small spot within a sample and then you can decide to map and obtain an image, for example, out of uh, stiffness of the material on a microscopic scale. The technique called Brillwin microscopy is both quantitative and label-free and biologists and clinicians alike are very excited by its potential for both research and for diagnostic applications. So, Brillon imaging is an imaging technique that uses uh, Brillon scattering interaction as a contrast mechanism. So, and Brillon scattering interaction is the interaction between light and sound inside the material. But how does Brillouin microscopy differ from conventional light microscopy? What are the mechanical properties of cells and why are they important to measure? Brillouin light scattering offers the possibility to create new types of microscope that produce images with a contrast based on the mechanical properties, not the optical properties. It doesn't tell you if the sample is red or blue, it doesn't tell you if the sample is transparent or opaque, it tells you if the sample is more rigid, if it is hard, if it is squishy or if it is liquid, that's what it tells you. The mechanical properties of cells and tissues, such as stiffness and viscosity, play a critical role in the maintenance of physiological functions. Over the last few decades, there has been mounting evidence that changes in mechanical properties can preclude the onset of various pathologies and are important for the subsequent progression of diseases. Mechanical properties of tissue are related to the health of some tissue uh, and also to the physiological condition or, or uh, uh, to the existence of some pathology in the uh, in tissues, in cells uh, and biological matter. An example of this uh, would be something called a aort aortic aneurysm. This is when the aorta uh, loses its uh, mechanical stiffness, it loses its elasticity and it expands. Scientists are currently exploring the potential of Brillouin microscopy as a novel, non-invasive diagnostic and prognostic tool for degenerative diseases such as cancers, glaucoma and aneurysms. Brillouin microscopy has, thanks to technological innovations, only become suitable for measuring live samples of biomedial interest over the last decade. It has, however, already started to find its way into the clinic. So the most mature application we, are, we have investigated in the past is the measurement of cornea mechanical properties to predict whether it's safe to do laser refractive surgery. But there are other applications that have been demonstrated, for example, using liquid biopsies to detect meningitis or to detect through the use of histological sections, atherosclerosis. Brillwin microscopy gives us information we need to more fully understand the physics of life. Through it, we can visualize and model in three dimensions how mechanical forces regulate biological events over time. By providing this invisible extra layer of otherwise inaccessible functional information, Brillwin microscopy allows us to paint a more comprehensive picture of how cells work and give us valuable insight into the origins and means of treating diseases. If you think about it, cancer is usually detected as a change in stiffness when there is palpation and, and stuff. So uh, we are now studying what does it mean at the cellular level. The signal is very rich, so we measure a lot of things that we have never measured. So we have a lot of exciting research to do on exactly understanding uh, how these properties are characterizing uh, living tissue. We know that it affects things. They're different over here, they're different there. Is that something to do with the underlying chemistry, the underlying structure? How does it actually affect a certain process? So these are all questions that we need to tackle.